This week on the Storycraft Society, we're gonna be doing a little bit different of a video just because I want to show off how easy this project is to do. And it's so useful in a billion different ways uh, if you're running tabletop role-playing games. So without any further ado, let's jump into it. Late video realization. I don't know why I thought that this video was going to end up any different than a regular video. I, I filmed it backwards technically, but that's not gonna show up in the edit, so stick around. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel, everybody. My name is Garmin. This is the Storycraft Society, and I have been thinking a lot about the fact that Spelljammer is coming out for 5th edition D&D. &D. So I'll just be upfront and honest. The kind of sailing through space concept is not something that I am particularly interested in. I'm more of a fantasy guy. I run more of my games as traditional fantasy based, but the thing that it did get me thinking about is if I were to run a game where I was sailing ships through space, how would I do that? And that of course then got me thinking about how I could run a game where I was running sailing ships in a fantasy setting and then that got me to where we are right now. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to make a modular system that allowed me to make modular ships so that I could quickly set up an interior, tear it apart, make a new interior so I could set up different floors of ships and that sort of thing. I could park two side by side and that could be ship to ship combat. This is the system that I came up with. And the one thing that I will say is that this system when I was coming up with it was something that I wanted to be incredibly simple to do so simple that it's like if this is your first D&D &D tile set that this would be something that is just unmess upable. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and dive into what we're going to be doing this week. I have made up a bunch of half inch thick tiles and I've made them into the general shape of what I need. Now, for this particular project, I found three different shapes that you need. The first one you need is the front of the ship, which is this kind of a shape. The middle of the ship, which can be as long or as many of these types of pieces as you want. And then finally, the last two, which is this shape where it kind of curves and then comes to a flat bit in the back. With those three shapes cut out, you can cut out as many of those as you want. You can make them to the general shape and size that you want. You can even make different ones for different ships, some that are thinner, some that are wider. You've got all kinds of options, but those are the three basic shapes. So let's quickly jump into what the next step is. So for the next step of this super simple project, you're gonna to want to pull out your X-Acto knives. And what you're going to do is you're going to texture these up to look like wood, first of all, because they're going to be a ship. Although I guess you could texture them up to look like anything that your ship was made out of. If you were doing something more sci-fi, you could do metal or something like that. But for me, it's gonna be wood planking. And the way that I'm going to do that to eventually get them looking like they're all textured up is I am going to first start cutting half inch lines the whole way down the piece that's going to make up all of my floorboards and then once I have that done then I'm going to take a plastic wire brush and I'm going to go over all of the planks to give them a wood grain the final thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use a toothpick to puncture in nail holes just to break up the visual a little tiny bit and the nail holes really actually do in my opinion a huge job of making the piece go from kind of zero to hero. Now I'm going to add a couple of other little tricks that I did in this particular project that will help go up just one little click and it doesn't take a whole lot of extra work. The first one is I'm going to take and cut a thin line the whole way around the outside edges of my piece. I'm going to widen that with a pencil just like I did with the other planks. Technically I forgot to say that. You want to widen all of your planks after you cut it with an X-Acto knife, but I'm sure you saw that in the footage. Um, you're going to want to widen that, make sure that that now looks like those planks are setting on top of vertical support beams that are all underneath. So that looks really nice from the side. And then the second thing that I'm going to do is for all of the grains at the end of the planks, I'm going to take a sharp pencil and I'm going to make all of my grain lines with that pencil. Again, it's a very subtle difference, but it's going to break up that texture on the ends of the pieces a lot better. So it will just help with the exterior visual of your piece. 
Now, if you're making a super basic set of these tiles, this is where you can stop. You've got your top, you've got your middle, and you've got your bottoms. But if you want to go up that next level of creativity and let that run wild, you can start adding walls. The way that I did this was I actually just cut out a notch into the piece that was about an eighth of an inch wide, cut a strip of eighth inch XPS, textured it to look like wood, and then glued it down into place. And then you get these cool looking pieces that give all kinds of ship dividers and that sort of thing. But the world is your oyster. So you get it, boats, that whole thing. The world is your oyster. <laughs> Bad jokes aside, ugh. You can do whatever you want with these tiles to make them look exactly how you want them to be. You can add stairways, you can add ladders, you can add masts. You can do as much as you want to make these pieces look as unique as you want them to. And what's so great about that is that adds to the modularity that you'll be able to use when you make all kinds of different ships. Now, since the centerpieces of the ships are kind of blank and boring, one little trick that I like to do in order to spruce them up a little bit and definitely make them feel like the inside of a ship is to put a mast in the middle. So the way that I like to do this is I get out a piece of dowel rod that's about the thickness of what I would think the mast would be. Then I'm going to cut that off to be about an inch and a half to two inches. You can kind of pick this height for yourself. Once I have that all cut off, I'm going to texture the outside of it up with a nail file to get it so that it looks like rough hewn wood like a nice rustic looking mast. The next thing that I do is I cut out a square of XPS foam and I cut a hole in the center of it to be able to slide that mast piece down in. I glue that in place and then I place it down onto my foam. I'm gonna glue this in place with hot glue. Easy, goes down fast and it will give you a nice sturdy bond. And then I'm going to wait until I get to paint. But once I get to that point, uh, then I'm gonna add one more trick to this that I'll show you when I get there. But speaking of paint, what I'm going to do is show you an incredibly simple way to paint these and fans of the channel for a long time will be very aware of what I'm getting ready to do. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go over the whole thing with a coat of Black Magic Craft base coat. This is not necessarily important for any reason other than I like it because it gives me a nice predictable finish that I know how my paints are gonna react over top of it, but it also strengthens the foam up just a little bit extra, which is nice, particularly for the eighth inch thick walls that are just a little bit extra flimsy. So once I have that over the whole piece, I'm gonna let that dry and then I'm going to move on to the actual painting. The painting is very simple. All I'm gonna do is pull out a few different colors of brown. I'm going to start with one that is very, very, very watered down so that it lets a lot of the black undercoat up through and I'm gonna go over the whole thing with that very watered down paint. Then I'm gonna move on to a couple steps of dry brushing that will just absolutely bring out all of that wonderful wood grain texture that we put in and it's going to make the piece really pop. For the mast, we're gonna go back to that. I painted out the base to look like it's some kind of worn metal with just a silver metallic paint and then a black wash over it. Now I painted out the color of the wooden mast with my favorite speed paint, which I cannot remember the name of at this exact moment, but it is on screen and therefore you will know what it is. Hold on, I'm gonna go look it up, I feel bad. Sand Gollum. Sand Gollum is the one that I've been really enjoying lately for all of my actual painting of wood color. Really love it. Sorry for the delay. Uh, <laughs> but then the final thing that I did was I took a piece of white string. I got that all mixed up with some Eileen's tacky glue by kind of twisting it into the fibers. And then I very carefully and neatly wrapped that around the mast to give a nice coiled rope look. And to me, that's just a simple touch that really fits and makes the mast look super spectacular. But with that said, that's all of the steps of this process. Now, I am very aware that it sounds like I took a whole bunch of steps and made them sound really simple. But truly, if you dive into this project, you'll realize if you just kind of stick to the basics of what I laid out here, it's really, really not that hard to do. This is a great first project for someone who doesn't have any tiles 
at all. And the one thing that's really nice is you can go out and you can buy dungeon tiles. You can go out and buy pre-existing maps of ships. But this is a really easy way for you to make a map of your own ship that you either find a sketch of or something that you have in your head that you want to sketch out and have as 3D terrain in front of your players. I just think this is a phenomenal first project, not just a great project for all crafting GMs and GMs of all types to have. <laughs> so hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely leave it a like down below. Leave me a comment of the type of tile that you would make as a modular system. I just feel like ships really make a lot of sense and particularly with Spelljammer coming out, it just really made me feel like that was a necessary worthwhile thing. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that yet. Share this video with a friend that you think would enjoy it because that's the number one way to help out a small YouTube channel. And that's it. That's all I've got for this week. So until next week, I'll be seeing you.